So welcome back to LSVU. It's great to have you back. Um, today I'm going to talk with you a little bit about our service from the mental health and wellbeing team. Um, and my name is Eleanor Baganza and I'm a mental health and wellbeing advisor. Um, so you may have heard of our team already, or you might be here because you're curious to know more. So today I'm just going to outline to you a little bit about our service. So the main things that we do within our team is that we offer support for students. So that could be that they're going through a stressful time. It could be that they've got an ongoing um, health condition. They might be diagnosed with a particular mental health condition or that they're going through something particularly difficult at that time, which means that they come to see us. So as well, settling into university, coming back again after the summer, getting back into the, the kind of routines of things can be quite challenging. So, you know, if, if anyone is feeling as though things are challenging, they can just get in touch with us. So it could be that, you know, you're just feeling a bit lonely, that you're struggling with settling into new places that you're living in. Um, and sometimes things happen in life that are out of our control, um, might have bereavements and things like that. So we're here to support anyone who needs it. At the moment, we're continuing to work off campus remotely. We're either offering telephone appointments or you can have an audio call uh, via Microsoft Teams, which you should be aware of. Um, if you've got any questions at the end of this, I'm going to give you our email address. so You can just email us directly. So this is our team. Um, you can see Ben is just a smiley face at the moment, uh, and I'm there at the bottom. Um, so Hamada is our manager, and then the rest of us will be advisors within the service. Um, we all do the same role, and that is to see students one-to-one, -one, and then we also run different training events such as this, um, and research projects and other kind of areas within the university. And we have been there kind of popping up on campus, so you might see us around if you're there. Um, and yeah, we're always around and about really at the moment. So anybody can access our, our service who's a current LSBU student. Uh, our appointments are confidential. So um, what you share with your advisor will generally stay within that space unless they're concerned about you or someone else. And the point of our appointments is really to cover lots of areas and think about how you're feeling in your life and what's been going on and together we can kind of work out a plan of action to kind of address anything that might need to be addressed going forward so there is our email address there and i put it again at the end of the presentation so it's just studentwellbeing at lsbu.ac.uk and that's our team inbox so if you want to speak with one of us or just learn more or inquire about something that's going on for you, you can just send us an email. So depending on um, what's going on for you, uh, we might talk about the best way to address the difficulty. So it could be talking through techniques that might be helpful for you, such as meditation, um, exercise, looking at whether you're having enough sleep, Things like that um, will kind of cover lots of areas in an appointment. And you might come and meet with us once, or if we think it's necessary, um, we will invite you to come and meet with us again. And are always here if you want to check in with us. Um, and the idea is that in our appointments, we create support plans or action plans with, with our students. So with you, with us, um, we'll create an idea of, of outlining what we talk about and the next steps that we think will be good. Um, we also have a counselling service with MIND, the mental health charity, and um, if we think that that's going to be appropriate for you, we can make referrals directly to them. Um, sometimes we do other things like writing to your GP, um, other mental health services, or just external support services. Um, and we can talk about that with you, and we'll generally ask you to fill in different forms to give us consent to help you um, in liaising with external services. Um, I guess one of the biggest points of our, our service is really just that support and that we're here when someone needs it, really. So you or someone else you might know can accessing our service. Um, so LSBU has invested in a platform called SilverCloud. Um, you may or may not have heard of cognitive behavioural therapy. 
but that is a specific medium of therapy that that works on um, looking at the way you are feeling and your thoughts that you're having and how that might then lead to um, behaviors and sometimes we can get into cycles that might not be the most beneficial for us so the idea behind um, cognitive behavior therapy is to look at those and look at our patterns and perhaps by changing the way that we've been thinking about things, we can then have a knock-on effect on the behaviours that we might present with as a result of that. Um, at the moment, the core um, programmes that you can sign up to are around stress, anxiety, depression, resilience. And there are also some additional ones around coping with COVID-19, which especially at the moment is going to be helpful for you. And that looks at coping with things you can control, coping with things you can't control. Um, and, and kind of giving you a bit of a snapshot of what's happening in your life during this pandemic. Um, so I really recommend going on to that web address that is listed there. And all you need is your LSVU email address to sign up. Um, and once you have an account, then that account is yours. You just need to remember your password, even after you've finished at LSVU. Um, and during appointments, we can talk with you about that more if you would like to. So feel free to let us know. Um, the only time it will let us know that a student is accessing this is if their risk score flags up to us. So if you score high in some of those areas, SilverCloud will just ping us a message to say, um, this student has got an account with us and we just wanted to let you know that you might want to check in with them. Yeah, but other than that, it's all confidential and we don't have a look at what you do on the questionnaires and everything on there. So it can be a really good tool to use to really look at something that might be affecting your life at the moment and give you some ideas for kind of self-help. So I would really recommend having a look at that. So this is a new module um, that you're going to see online on Panopto called the Epigeum. Bit of an unusual name. And it was uh, created by Oxford University. Um, and the title of the module is Being Well, Living Well. Um, so you'll be able to find it on Moodle. And yeah, so it's, it's kind of gathering research from lots of different areas um, and putting together kind of a way of you working through this in your own time um, to look at the different areas of your life. Financial well-being is one that we haven't touched upon so far in this presentation, but that is something that we often find can be really helpful for students to kind of have an insight into um, and just generally have that holistic look at your lives. So the four strands of the program you'll see at the bottom there is living well, feeling well, staying safe and spending well. And I'm actually going to be supervising this new module. So if you wanted to have a look at it or you've got any questions, um, you can email through to our inbox um, and I will be able to kind of guide you on that. But the idea is that you can just do this in your own time and it will it will kind of help you to kind of look at your own life and any changes that you can make um, to bring about positive new things, really. So yeah, any questions you have about any of this, you can ask me at the end. So I've been a mental health and wellbeing advisor now for a few years, and my background is that I'm a healthcare professional. So I've worked with many different client groups over the past eight years. And um, working with students, what I've found is that there's a, there's a kind of key component I hear from people, which is around listening to yourself and kind of befriending yourself and, and being able to come to terms with how you're feeling at any given time, which can be really, really challenging. Um, so um, one of the biggest things is looking at all areas of your life at the moment. So you could you could even write this down and think about how has my sleep been lately? What kind of exercise helps me? What things um, do I find really, really can help me to feel well? But when I stop doing them, I feel a bit off balance. Some people find that they'll uh, stop getting in contact with people when their mental health starts to go uh, downwards a little bit or they will um, find that they uh, stop cooking and stop eating very much or that it can go the other way and they might find that they're overeating a little bit so it might be having a look at your life at, at the moment and look at what happens to you when things might get a little bit more stressful 
and what are your ways of coping that are helpful and what are your ways that are a bit um, a bit difficult to deal with once they happen. So in an appointment, that is something that we generally look at with people. It's what's going on in their lives and what is working well and what might they like to change a little bit. So the curiosity is one of the biggest things really, is rather than approaching yourself with judgment, it's just being curious about what's happening and why that might be. Um, and before things do get challenging, it's always helpful to try and look at things when they're going well, um, so that then you can actually get through the tougher times. And um, there's something called the mental health continuum, which could be really helpful to explain mental health. Um, and it looks at um, well-being on a scale, and that you don't necessarily have to be diagnosed with a mental health condition for your well-being to go to a lower level that anyone can have lower well-being regardless of their mental health and whether they have a diagnosis or not. It might be that you're doing fine and that you're feeling really good and then something might happen, you might have a breakup or you might have um, a bereavement as I mentioned earlier and then you might find that your well-being goes a little bit lower because you find it harder to communicate with people, you find it harder to keep up with work and things like that. But then with support, um, you might find that your well-being can go back up again on that scale. Whereas someone might have a diagnosis of, say, bipolar disorder and, and still be high up on the well-being scale because they have reached out for support. And if they find that their symptoms are changing, they're continuing to do that. And they have support from the Disability and Dyslexia Service. They are in contact with their doctors regularly. You know, so support is really the key thing um, that I think can really help um, if you're not feeling so great. Um, and ask for help early on. So rather than things snowballing, it's always helpful if you can reach out to somebody if you start to notice things are going a bit off track for you. Um, and that could be a lecturer, a personal tutor, could be our service directly. Um, if you have a disability and dyslexia support service already in place, um, then it might be that you speak to um, your mentor or your skills tutor or somebody. Um, or, or your GP. We always recommend going to see your GP. So um, if you have a look on our web page, you can find all sorts of things on there, a bit of, bit of advice that we put on there for you, but also um, the apps that we recommend because um, there are so many out there. We've grouped them into three areas. There is um, anxiety and depression, mindfulness, and also self-harm and suicide prevention. So you can go on there and download the PDFs for those. Um, and it's just a few apps on each of them that we just think are pretty good for helping with those things. Um, yeah, and I would also recommend having a look um, on a website called NHS Good Thinking, which is a database that you can access anonymously. Um, and you can go on there and just say, say, I'm feeling anxious or I'm feeling stressed or I'm not sleeping well, answer a few questions and it just pings up with resources that you can access. So that's something else worth looking at. And that's called NHS Good Thinking. So that's really just a roundup of our service today. Um, if you've got any questions, please just post them there in the Q&A um, and I can answer those for you. But I hope that you found that helpful. And just to explain as well about the Disability and Dyslexia Service, they're the other half of our team um, and they offer support for students with their studies. So at any point during your studying, um, if you feel that you might have dyslexia that's undiagnosed or you might have a physical health condition that's impacting on you, or you've got a longer term mental health condition that maybe you've never spoken about before, um, it would be worth um, looking at the disability and dyslexia pages on um, our LSB website um, and seeing if that, that would help you. Okay, any questions, anybody? Okay, I think we've got one coming through. Oh, 
Oh, thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks very much. Really good to have you here. Um, and I hope that you um, feel as though you can just contact us on that email address if you've got any questions at all. You're very welcome to. Okay, so I'm going to stop recording now if no one else has any more questions.